It says Furiosa up in smoke with a hundred, with not a hundred, with th- thirty-one million to thirty-three million lowest Memorial Day opening in decades. Might get clawed by Garfield. How worried should Hollywood be about the actual Saturday update? So basically, this is updated, um, an updated one. So they said that yeah, Garfield might win, might beat Furiosa in the box office, and that's all yeah, of but- uh, Chris Pratt. <laughs> Oh, okay. He voiced <laughs> but, he voices Garfield. Yeah, yeah, he 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 did. But my question, okay, probably the article tackled it. How much did these movies cost? I imagine for yours it cost a lot. But Garfield, I'm not so sure. All right. So let's go ahead and read this article and see what it says. It says Saturday AM. So this updated today. This Memorial Weekend at the uh sorry, this a weekend at the Memorial Box Office, the film industry seems to be questioning its existence. Wow. Uh, ready to jump out of the window. Holy shit. Um, how can genius George Miller direct a tentpole prequel to multi-Oscar winning Mad Max Fury Road with great reviews and four and a half stars post-track ex- uh, exits not to be working? The entire theatrical business is destined for streaming. Oh no, people will forever stay on their couches. As Cher said to Nicolas Cage, in Moonstruck as she smacked him in the face. Snap out of it. It's not really right to make Furiosa or Garfield, for that matter, the proxies of Memorial Box, uh, Memorial Day box office. Furiosa is stuck on track for 31-33. Holy shit. I believe the projection was supposed to be 80 million. Oh, d- dang. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's not 31 good. <laughs> is really not, bad. Yeah. Not, not, not even half of the projection. Yeah. For post nut clarity purposes, sorry, the last film that grossed in this vicinity was 1980s Return of the Jedi and Indiana Jones: The Last Crusade, and this is this is not even factoring inflation. However, yeah. we stand corrected. It's the number. It's the lowest number one memorial opening in 29 years. The last time we bought him out was 1995's Casper. This movie was pretty good. Casper the Friendly Ghost. And as we told you in our summer preview, Alcon Sony's Garfield could beat her with a similar four-day haul. Jeez. As, gr- uh, as great as anyone, including myself, might think Furiosa is, Mad Max is finite fanboy property. Rated, uh, okay, R-rated th- at that, and he's always been. You know how many 13 to 17-year-old went to Furiosa yesterday? 2%. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big boy quad that's missing do you know how many women went yesterday 29 adults over 55 uh 55 9 percent mad max and furiosa weren't everyone's movies get uh get with it people mad max fury road opened to 45.4 million and was beaten by girls at the box office with pitch perfect 2 i watched pitch perfect 1 that was okay Pitch I didn't watch two? any of them. You're not missing out or anything. You're not missing yeah, out. Yeah, I get the feeling. <laughs> yeah. Which mowed him down at number one and taking 69 giggity millions in mid-May 2015. Yes, that film at 154 million domestic, 380 uh, million worldwide is the highest grossing in the franchise. But in the 1980s, Warner Brothers version weren't mass appealing movies back in the day. In 1982, Road Warrior grossed north of 23 million at the time, uh, when that year delivered six 100 million plus grossing movies stateside. ET alone made north of 238 million by the end of the summer. Holy shit! 1985, Mad Max: The Thunderdome, a starring uh, pop legend Tina Turner, also didn't set the world on fire with 36 million domestic. Damn. So. You said how much did the movie cost? I believe the movie cost was, um, I believe for this movie it was, I think, a hundred and fifty million dollars or a hundred. Oh, here it is. Okay, I found it right here. So uh, right here, uh, it's a different article right over here. This is from Road Track. Right over here, Furiosa's budget was reportedly 168 million compared to an estimated 300,000 for the first movie. Yeah, yeah, they're not getting their money back. <laughs> Holy true. crap! And Absolutely. I did see a person on X comparing, like, oh, do you know what movie came out last year that made a lot of money? Little Mermaid. 
<laughs> the Little Mermaid it... was last year. Oh it, man! <laughs> so over here, like if you go to Forbes, like Disney sinks three hundred million into over budget Little Mermaid film. Yeah. So, so right now, it does not look good. It does not look good at all. So for this one, for Furiosa, from from according to what I heard, people are either giving it a meh or they like it a lot. But uh, but yeah, like the thing is, this is. This is a prequel that, according to chat, did not have, uh, did not have a what's it called again, uh, Mad Max in it at all. It's only Furiosa. Do we review movies? We do, but not this one. We didn't review this one. It's because yeah, we, uh, it's not something that like we like we watch the entire series and then now we're really really um, involved with like the whole story and we want to see what happens right with prequels and whatnot. But no, this is the movie that we didn't watch. But we do re uh, review movies, though. Yeah, it's usually yeah. after a, after the guy after the movie was released. We don't do out of theater reviews yet, because like we, we don't think we as of now we don't consider it worth going to the theaters over. But maybe in the future, maybe if there's like a really, really like Deadpool three, maybe maybe we can do an out of theater review out for for that one. But we'll yeah, see. Deadpool but yeah, three, we do, we... we're definitely going to review that movie for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So now here's the thing, though. That's not all. Do you, and do you know what's also making things worse? Do you know what's also making things worse? This article that's tied into Furiosa comes to us from IGN, the best article place in the world, right, Gray? Mm. And it says, Furiosa, why Mad Max movies don't need Mad Max anymore? Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Uh, yeah, yeah, IGN is like... This year they they went mega ultra maximum woke <laughs> for, for for 2024, like it they they jacked it up to a whole new level ever for this year. It's like, yeah, it's whenever it's like a movie or a TV show or even the Yasuke, they're riding really hard on the Yasuke topic right now. I don't know. IGN is like, who's the only good one? Maybe Destin. I'm not even sure if he's. I haven't heard from him, heard a review from him for quite a while now. I, yeah. I get the feeling Destin is trying to, um, they're trying to remove Destin because, like, he's like the dude with actual games journalism experience and it, who's trying to be a legit games journalist compared to everyone else. Yeah, man, this is crazy, dude. <laughs> see, uh, like, who, what the hell, man? Let's see, a strange life in the wasteland where. Only the mobile enough to scavenge, brutal enough to pillage can survive. At one time, Mad Max was our default hero in this world, but creator George Miller proves with Furiosa a Mad Max saga. And I'm assuming there are multiple, if it sounds like a saga, is, is there going to be multiple prequels? Right? See, there are many stories to be told in this universe that go beyond that of Max uh, Rock Rockatansky. On the one hand, spinning off a popular character in her own film is nothing new to these franchises, uh, franchise uh, heady days. But the, the case of Mad Max is much more complicated than that because almost from the start 45 years ago, Miller has been creating through the world of Max Max a mythos that allows for constant reinvention and reformatting of the series, even while continuing to explore the core concept that the first tackled uh, with the original film back in 1979. Uh, we've been telling revenge stories in all cultures. There is a kind of cultural revolution, sorry, evolution where stories are told over and over again, but somehow they have to have some sort of re uh, re um, sorry, resonance with their times. Oh, since we are in the woke era, we need to make movies that resonate with woke times. Uh yeah. So yeah. Imagine imagine making a movie about Spider-Man with Spider-Man uh tied in like heroes and not having Spider-Man in it. Oh, they did that. It's called Madam Web and it sucked. <laughs> oh man. I, I don't want to finish this article. Gray, how do you feel about this, dude? Yeah. I, I don't know. IGN is quickly becoming the new Kotaku. It's like Kotaku is on its last legs, but I just like we'll take up the mantle for you, all the summer candy. <laughs> we'll take up the mantle for you. Maybe they'll even hire her because like they I I believe they they acquired a lot of newsletters too, like Rock Paper, Shotgun, Eurogamer. I believe they're under IGN now too, according to an article I read earlier this week. 
But yeah, uh, I don't know, man. It's like I'm not sure what's up. If it, I'm not sure, I haven't watched a GameSpot review in a long time. But I don't think GameSpot is going on full woke as IGN is doing. It's like IGN really quadrupled down, quadrupled down like a quadruple Ubisoft title on being ultra woke for some reason. But yeah, uh, IGN another L take. It's like they always take an L take when it comes to uh, movies and TV shows. Sometimes games they get it right, but even even then, it's getting less and less frequent in my opinion. Like the DEI mm-hmm. people are starting to dominate in that company for some reason. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.